Hi, I'm Chris Chernohoy at the University of Wisconsin River Falls, and I am your host for the Francis Kohler Coffee Concert Series. We thank all of you for tuning in and listening to the wonderful music and the great things that we are producing on and off Abbott Concert Hall stage. With me today is our cellist, and we have Laura Sewell. Laura is going to be performing with Yvonne Konev, a beautiful piece of music, six British folk songs for cello and piano. The best part about this is it's one of her children. I know that sounds funny, but whenever you've had a piece of music that's been written for you and especially commissioned by your parents, Fred and Gloria Sewell, they hired this composer, Paul Schoenfield, in 1985 to write this as a gift for Laura. So without further ado, Laura, welcome to River Falls. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Oh, we are so happy to have you here. And we appreciate all the talent that you bring to the whole Twin Cities region as a musician and freelancer, adding to our artistic environment and all things that are inspiring oh, in our world. Thank you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the six British folk songs? Well, my parents commissioned it for me in 1985 to honor Jacqueline Dupre, who was a famous cellist, um, an English cellist. And I had studied with her a few years earlier when I was in high school. I had gone to London and lived there for a year and studied with Jacqueline Dupre. And then Jacqueline Dupre uh, was suffering from multiple sclerosis at that time. Her career had been cut short at the age of 30. And so it was a very interesting experience to study with someone who was facing this terrible disease. Later she died and my parents were so moved by her whole career and her story and my experience with her that they decided to commission this piece. Paul Schoenfield is a very well-known composer who currently uh, teaches at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, but he was living in the Twin Cities at that time. And so they commissioned him. And he chose the idea of doing six British folk songs to honor Dupre because of her English heritage. And they have very interesting titles and they are well-known folk songs, but what he has done with the, each of them is so incredibly unique and special and it's an incredible piece i've only performed it four times mainly because most pianists are not willing to play the piano part which is fiendishly difficult um the cello part's not easy either but the piano part is really something but yvonne took it on with an amazing um enthusiasm and he i think has grown to really love the piece and um, I'm so lucky to be playing it. Some of the titles that you're discussing of the various movements, um, Jack Tar, A Basket of Eggs, The Gypsy Laddie, A Parting Kiss, The Lousy Tailor, and A Dream of Napoleon. Yes. Do you have a favorite? Um, I think the fourth movement, A Parting Kiss, is everybody's favorite. It's very moving, very sad. Um, it's, it's a kind of a famous tune. I think people who hear it have a vague memory of having heard it somewhere before. The joy of folk songs is it represents people. And right. It represents people for generations. That's right. So a number of these folk songs are very, very old. Mm -hmm. And as I was telling one of my classes just the other day, people change the words. Oh, that's probably true. <laughs> yeah, so often there's an original to either the melody, mm -hmm. then come the words, and then somebody else adapts them. No, maybe it's another poet or Obviously, we know that from the study of hymns as well. Is there one that the words just speak to you? Well, some of the words are really violent, like mm -hmm. a lousy tailor and a gypsy laddie. They're, they're actually kind of horrifying words. <laughs> so maybe it's just as well that nobody's going to hear the words. Um, and it could be that just the version that I looked up um, isn't necessarily always the words that are sung. As you said, these tunes are old and words you know, change, but the tunes remain. Well, so when you think of folk songs and when you think of some of the things you learned as a child, some of those were quite that's violent right. as well, <laughs> that's right. they? Yeah, they're like sort of awful fairy tales or something. Same heritage. Yeah, that's right. Right? Yeah. Most of those came from England. All right, so Laura, you've had quite a career and you still continue to have a career. You have your great enthusiasm. She's probably the only person I know with a red cello case. <laughs> Bright red. Bright red. It's just <laughs> beautiful and it's got terrific energy. Tell us about maybe your highlights of the last three years. Oh, boy. Well, a highlight. 
you don't have to go into the whole world. Well, my favorite thing to do is chamber music. Um, for years, I was in a group called the Lark Quartet earlier in my career. And then later, I was with the Artaria Quartet, which is based in Minnesota. And I'm, I love playing with the Isles Ensemble, which I've been with since 2005. And that's how I know Yvonne. So um, we do three or four concerts a year. And those are always highlights for me. Um, just any any time I'm playing chamber music with fabulous musicians. Fantastic. Because the idea here is when you play chamber music, you learn your part, you learn everybody else's part. There's an intimacy of communication and you just are inspired off of each other's music. That's right. But you're one on a part. So you're very responsible for that line. But you have to be able to respond with what you hear everybody else do while the music is playing. We look forward to your performance and future performances here at the University of Wisconsin River Falls. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your talent with us. Hi, Chris Chernohoy here from the University of Wisconsin River Falls. What an honor it is to have Ivan Konev on our stage once again. Ivan Konev is a fantastic pianist, dedicated teacher, amazing musician and collaborator, and all around great guy. There aren't that many people who have such a high level of excellence who can who can exude such positive energy everywhere you go. I thank you for that, and it's really fun to be your colleague. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I'm, I'm glad I have this mask, actually, so I start blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to hear Yvonne playing piano with six British folk songs for cello and piano. The funny thing about this is Laura says she can't play it very often because there's not too many pianists who will undertake the difficulty of this work. What did you have to do in preparation? I had to have lots of time. And that's what I had. I had one full year to, to learn this work. So the first time I saw that, I was a little bit stressed. <laughs> it's probably the hardest score that I ever seen in chamber music. And uh, uh, But uh, again, I had the whole year to do that. So uh, uh, if there's any plus to that pandemic is that I, I was able to learn pieces like this. There are so many musicians who have made positive moves during the uh, during this pandemic and used their resources for recordings, for study, for publicity, for learning new skills like editing films, all this virtual concert stuff. What else did you do besides learning new work? Um, well, I, I'm a young parent, <laughs> so as you can imagine, uh, with that comes additional responsibilities and uh, was very much busy parenting my two years old son. Um, but from the professional perspective, I, uh, I just did lots of research uh, on the things that I uh, interested the most, um, um, such as uh, Bach's polyphony and um, um, theory, music, some, some of the music, musical theory uh, concepts that I explored. And, um, you know, click with a couple different music programs and um, yeah to make the best use of that time. And that is a beautiful way to do it. It's a positive attitude and it's using time to benefit yourself and then ultimately benefit us as um, listeners and colleagues and students who are then benefiting from your knowledge. Absolutely. We live in a society where it's so busy and we fill it with so many different things that that stop, stopping for that intellectual and personal pursuit of excellence is not always celebrated. So the pandemic has actually been a blessing of time mm -hmm. and your lovely wife also is a musician and so you have to take turns uh, practicing and using your space and taking care of your son uh, at least he's not school age because those well, parents yeah. seem to be having quite <laughs> quite a, a juggling life yeah but he's all introduced to musical instruments so they started uh, his little violin <laughs> since he has a little violin he, he likes to play and of course he plays he's thanks to the piano that's absolutely fantastic so I appreciate your talent. We look forward to your piano playing for now and for many men months to come. Ivan is a regular for the Francis Kohler Coffee Concert Series, and he is generous with his time and a collaborative pianist with very, very many groups and very many people. So we look forward to his playing. There's one more thing that 
I'd like to mention about the six movements of the piece. I mentioned earlier that Jacqueline Dupre suffered from multiple sclerosis, and Paul Schoenfield, the composer, decided to take that as a further inspiration for the way the six movements flow one into another. Um, they follow the, the emotional course that a person might go through who is suffering from a terminal illness. So the first movement, Jack Tar, everything is still okay. It's very confident and bold. The second movement, A Basket of Eggs, has a sort of uneasy quality to it, um, as if mm, something's not quite right. The third movement, uh, The Gypsy Laddie, is um, actually the invasion of the body. Things are just going all wrong. The fourth movement, The Parting Kiss, is sorrow, uh, and saying goodbye. Um, the fifth movement is the lousy tailor, which is anger, anger and denial. And the sixth movement, a dream of Napoleon, is finally acceptance.